Our next speaker is um, Air Joan, and uh, 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 she's been uh, at the Institute for over a couple of decades and is a great scholar. Uh, she has been working on a project for a very long time uh, called Regenesis, actually. <laughs> we happen to be talking about Genesis, looks like. But um, uh, th that's a whole different project. Uh, it's on CIS library webpage at the moment. But she's also a photographer who has been documenting her uh, encyclopedia of Regenesis with photographs for, you know, from all these years. And we hope to have this up. 35. Uh, we hope to have it up uh, digitally at some point, hopefully within the next few years when we uh, go digital uh, <laughs> on uh, academia. So, um, uh, Air, please come forward. Thank you so much. Air um, is a reference librarian, very passionate about scholarship and uh, helping students on a regular basis. And uh, we appreciate your uh, time today. Thank you. For those of you that have been here earlier, I think that you will be cognizant of the keywords. There's a great similarity of keywords that we have used today, not the least of which is in the last presentation as well. And so it's an honor to be here with you. I welcome you so much. And Bauman, thank you very much for this invitation. Um, the following is an overview. Oh, thank you, sir. You're always so helpful. The following is an overview of eco-theology and a labyrinth learning process that began in the 1978 fall semester. Yes, I don't forget anything, especially dates. As those who work with me can all attest to. That began in the 1978 fall semester at an East Coast university when the philosophy department chair and friend said in, in essence, if your interest in philosophy includes females and other populations, you are then in the wrong department. This afternoon's considerations, some 37 years later, speaks to the bounty of that gestalt homecoming. Philosophy ended that afternoon when we finished that conversation. I finished the semester, but I was done with philosophy. And it was then a new paradigm as I was talking to a potential student here a little bit earlier. When something ends, there is something there that is waiting to be taken up, that is waiting to come, waiting to be regenerated, reborn. Today's presentation will be in four segments. It will begin with Gaian oneness, then eco-theology, labyrinth learning, and followed by an ontological continuum of the 21st century. The eco-theology of Gaian oneness and metamorphosis of labyrinth learning. Gaian oneness, being ourselves part of the oneness, bridges the personal organic matter and the universal organic matter as one and the same. Through this holistic way of knowing, the self and the universe are then constantly co-creating in tandem. And now I think we can talk about the brain as well. We have hope. Although I don't know how we're going to support ourselves when we're 100 or 120, but we'll do our best. The self and the universe are then constantly co-creating in tandem via intuition, dreaming, musing, meditating, praying, tutoring, teaching, writing, dancing, cooking, singing, living, dying, 
aching, recreating ourselves again. And all creative, synchronistic expressions of being ourselves part of the Gaian oneness. It's one of our books in the library, uh, Willis Harmon, Towards a Science of Wholeness. Eco-theology. In the paradigm of holistic interdependence, eco-theology coined in Regenesis Encyclopedia, the 1999 edition, is rooted in the life-affirming principles and values in which the whole of nature is divine and eminent. Note that Naomi Goldenberg coined theology as the logic of Gaian spirituality. It was in her text, Changing of the Gods, 36 years ago, 1979 text. Ecotheology embodies the multiplicity of sacred matter that is indivisible, as in mind, body, spirit, by nature conjoined. Mind, body, spirit, by nature conjoined. Or as Ken Wilber suggests, you are no longer part of the stream, you are that stream. With all unfolding, not only around you, but in you. This thesis of a multiplicitous stream that is not merely unfolding around you, but in you, speaks to the ontology of eco-theology. Ontology as in the nature of being. Being as a verb. B-E hyphen I-N-G, an actual word. Ontology as in the nature of being. In the 2015 edition of the Regenesis Encyclopedia, I'd like to think it comes out this year. Trust me, at 35 years working on this, I really want this to happen. In the 2015 edition of Regenesis Encyclopedia, Synthesis of Spiritual Dark Motherline, Integral Research, Labyrinth Learning, and Eco-Theology. The ecological interdependence with the larger natural world includes nature goddesses, or Gaian web, or Gaian oneness, in which all elemental life forms in the omnipresent cosmos are eternal, boundless, interconnected, and infinitely sacred. For example, a metaphysical construct of per diem synchronicities tethered to the ebb and the flow of the seasonal rhythms of the land, the cycles of the sun in the moon, also known as the vegetation cycles or the wheel of the year, the eternal renewal of all life forms. In this metaphysical echo theology construct of elemental life forms is the quantum leap from the biblical Genesis dominion of mind over the matter of nature to we each are nature. In Mary Daly's unique wisdom, Mary Daly's, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, she says that we are the elements and the elements are us, as in a holographic, gynamorphic, meta-memory. In summary, unlike monotheistic biblical theology, eco-theology is a complex Gaian web a sustainable interrelationship between human and non-human ecosystems that is grounded in multidisciplinary flexibility and interdisciplinary interactions in which the sum is always greater than the parts. This complex Gaian web nurtures labyrinth learning, diversity constructs, a participatory research versus rigid linear methods. Labyrinth learning is defined as an epistemology that recognizes a relational 
an embodied nature of knowledge that supports subjectivity, subjectivity in a dynamic learning process. Labyrinth learning. Labyrinth learning speaks to a contemplative inquiry that is a recursive, cyclical, evolving process. As with eco-psychology, which you know, it is the synergistic interplay between self and the cosmos that awakens the inherent sense of environmental reciprocity. It is a synergistic interplay between self and the cosmos that awakens the inherent sense of environmental reciprocity. It's that constant dance with everything that is around us. If we are open to it. In this earth-centered contemplative practice, the labyrinth is but a conduit of the Gaian process in which the topic chooses the student. I don't have the statistics here, but I can tell you as a reference librarian, I use this concept every day from BS sorry, BAC students to dissertation students. When they come in, whatever I know, whoever I am, whatever I believe in, my job is to meet them where they are. And as soon as we do, we build a bridge so that they can have that understanding, whatever the angst, whatever the fear, whatever the concern is about what they don't know, we can get over that immediately. This topic has chosen you. I look at several of you in this audience, and I almost want to weep. I am so excited to be able to be part of your process. The topic chooses the student. This interconnected postmodern approach relates to all capabilities, all disciplines, and all metaphoric ways of knowing. As I say, I don't have the stats, but I do have the proof from the students, many of which that are sitting in this room. In Regenesis Encyclopedia, the emergence of anaconic phenomena of the labyrinth can be traced back to the spiral and the meander around 30,000 BCE. Although it was during the Neolithic, which is between 8,000 BCE to 3,500 to 3000 BCE, that the labyrinth and labyrinthine engravings became more pronounced, along with the coil, the spiral, the snake, the concentric circles, owl goddesses. The one I am wearing today is Inca, and it also has an exact replica of it in Mesopotamia as well. Two other owls that I have brought, these are Neolithic that I discovered on one of my field work trips are up here. You are welcome to come and see them when we finish. The etymology of both labyrinth and labrys is the Greek labyrinthinos, a network of intricate passageways that derive their meaning from the word labrys, fertile womb of the great mother earth. Regenesis suggests that the labrys is a manifestation of incantation rites and metamorphoses or regenerative rituals. The returning journal journey to the labrys is known as the katabasis, or the, the descent, katabasis, which is also Greek. Metaphorically walking the labyrinth may have three stages, including detachment, parthenogenic rebirth, and then integration, or regenesis, during the exit or the ascent. In Mazes and Labyrinths of the World, W.K. Jackson links the labyrinth to death and rebirth themes as a microcosm of the earth and a macrocosm of the human anatomy. In death, one returns to the earth, the mother, from which one is eventually reborn. My personal experience with close friends, mentors, colleagues that have died, when they have died, I have always thought of them, of their passing their mantle over to everyone they knew, everyone who had read their work, to their families, to their friends. And so when I say reborn, 
That's what I am talking about. That when there is this passing and our pulse is no longer beating, our work, our life, our theories, our passions continue with everyone that has ever known us. The presence of the labyrinth at burial structures signals a ritual entry into the earth. The labyrinth represents both the earth and the human body as sources of life. She is alive. She is pulsating. We are alive, maybe even more so today than we were 30 minutes ago. In other interpretations, the labyrinth is understood as the embodiment of all aspects of birth, life, death, and rebirth. As noted earlier, labyrinth learnings, diversity constructs of participatory research or mutual learning versus rigid linear methods maintains the self and the topic into existence. It maintains the self and the topic into existence. In labyrinth learning, each brings the other into existence. In this context, Mara Keller speaks to participatory research, where the researcher is included in the overtly in the unfolding of the research process, which is intended to be transformative of self and potentially of the subjects of the research and the larger culture. As we transition into the ontological continuum of the 21st century deep ecological movement and Gaia's oneness, including all her diverse children, may we continue to move beyond anthropomorphic worldviews and into a biocentric ecosystem. May we continue to move beyond dualistic ideologies that Rozak calls beyond heroic oppositions, beyond disenfranchised female philosophers and other underrepresented populations. May we move beyond the biblical Genesis polemics against Eve, women, and nature, beyond value-laden binaries of masculine, feminine scripts, including the feminine anima realms. May we move beyond the monotheistic topologies of Genesis dominion to fiduciary larger community needs beyond segregated Olympian archetypes to we are all unique archetypes. No one has to teach you that. You already know that. Own that. Beyond master enslaved paradigms, beyond all forms of otherness. Gaia invites, proposes, that the 21st century practice of labyrinth learning might be a healing homecoming, as it was for me 37 years ago. May labyrinth learning also be a healing homecoming that maintains you and your conjectures, your ideas, your passions, your dreams, your hopes, your potentials into existence. In closing, may we meet again in Gaia's labyrinth and other circles within circles. In other conversations, in other cross-departmental opportunities. The Norse Theater, not too shabby. In the meantime, welcome to the world of eco-theology 
and Guy in oneness and labyrinth learning practice. Thank you so much for being here. Say anything right now. Oh, why not? <laughs> Bauman and I have worked together for 22 years, and we, at times, we're the odd couple, and then some other times we get on rather well, and we've been doing quite well recently. <laughs> yes, love comes in a thousand different ways. Oh, I wouldn't have gone that far. <laughs>